Today we celebrate Epiphany, which takes place on January 6th. Epiphany celebrates the visit of the Magi to the Christ child. It also highlights that Christ is the light of the nations. Now, I'll warn you ahead of time, many of your childhood memories about the Magi might very well be wrong. For starters, all those nativity sets with the wise men, wrong. The Magi definitely didn't show up at the manger. It was probably months or possibly up to two years later that they showed up after Jesus' birth. And Matthew specifically tells us that the Magi came to visit Jesus at his house. In other words, the Magi weren't lining up with the sheep and shepherds taking numbers to see when they could visit Jesus. Now, I enjoy the song, We Three Kings, but calling them kings is also wrong. It's only in the dubious dark ages that the tradition of calling them kings becomes a thing. The word Matthew uses is magi. The scriptures, specifically the book of Daniel and other historical writings, often use the word magi to describe court advisors to Gentile kings. Remember those jealous court advisors of King Darius who got Daniel thrown into the lion's den? Well, they were magi. The best other example from the Bible might be the court magicians of Pharaoh, or possibly Balaam, who consorts with the wicked king Balak of Moab, who seeks to curse the Hebrews traveling through his land. Uh, speaking of Balaam, this more ancient magi almost unwillingly prophesies about this very star, saying, This is an oracle of one who knows the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the vision of the Almighty falling down with his eyes uncovered. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel." It's hardly a coincidence that Matthew uses that same word, behold, when introducing magi from the east, coming because of a star announcing a king's birth. It was probably shocking, not, not only for Jerusalem, but also for early Jewish Christians when these magi end up showing God's people the appropriate attitude to have towards Jesus. They bring gifts, honoring and bowing down before Jesus. It's surprising because magi are usually the bad guys consorting with rulers and false deities who are opposing God's plan. Now, admittedly, these magi do need a lot of help. They show up at the wrong city, Jerusalem, and have to be guided by the scribes and chief priests. Later, they again are going to need the star to guide them to the exact house where Jesus was. You see, even calling them wise men can be a little bit misleading. And again, no one really starts calling them wise men until way later. In a sense, they become wise, but they are none the wiser of some of the prophecies about Jesus' birthplace or Herod's wicked intentions until they're told otherwise. If we want to call them wise, it's not because they know everything on their own. They're wise because they listen to guidance from the scriptures and from Yahweh. As we remember the visit of the Magi, we especially praise our Heavenly Father that God wants all to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. And by his guidance and promises leads us to Jesus, who is the light of the world no darkness can overcome.